Okay, so if you clicked on this video, then you understand something that many people don't. That is about the internal, the intrinsic reward that if you want to get what you want, it's not about you striving and making it about the thing itself. It's about you becoming the person that would already have the thing. So yes, this is kind of going to be about law of attraction, but honestly, this is going to tie into a lot of things that has to do with success because in our culture, we push success as, a, as getting the thing, basically. And um, this will also have to do a lot with positive psychology and it's going to be an integration of mindset, basic stuff, but also much wider things, much more deep philosophical lessons that I have learned that have helped me achieve a state of peace, stability, and purpose. In doing that, I have been able to go through life in a way where I can get the thing that I want or I can chill while I'm getting it. But the doubt and the inner turmoil that a lot of people go through when it comes to getting what they want, that is something that I have like managed to decrease to a level that is very manageable and hardly affects my life. So with that being said, if you're a person who cares more about purpose, clarity, stability over getting the thing itself, then you are in the right channel because what I emphasize when it comes to law of attraction is not so much the aspect of the form, the form being the thing itself. What I emphasize is the person who you're becoming along the way. Because a lot of people in Law of Attraction don't talk about this and it's kind of annoying because at the end of the day, if this is your journey, it's about you understanding your power as a creator and about achieving a state of being that is in alignment with their soul. So let's proceed. I think a lot of the things that we will be talking about, um, it will it will embody a few things. The first one for sure being law of attraction, LOA. Um, the second one being mindset, which is very basic stuff, but I'll get into that. Um, the third thing I want to go over is for sure going to be uh, some deeper realizations which are very powerful. I will call them my my lessons. Some very powerful lessons I have learned along the way. And another aspect that we will be talking about will also just be psychology. All aspects of psychology, whether it be behavioral psychology, whether it be cognitive psychology, whether it be Jungian psychology, analytical psychology, etc. All those things are things that I have experience with and that I have used to be able to manifest my life, but more importantly, manifest or become the person that I am, step into the power that I have. So, first off, I want people to understand that spirituality is probably one of the greatest tools that you can have access to when it comes to getting what you want. Because people at first come to spirituality because they want to get the thing, love attraction, etc. And then through the years, they realize that it's more so about your yourself, inner management, inner work. And let me first go over law of attraction. So I got into law of attraction to basically attract my ideal partner, my wife. She's right here, chilling. But along the way, I realized that in, in reality, law of attraction is just positive psychology. The, the rewiring that I had to go through in order to get what I want and be okay with not having it, it came from me understanding how to play with my mind and basically how to choose the thoughts that I think are the most beneficial. It's about learning how to manage your attention. And that's why... We, ha we talk a lot about meditation in spirituality because you can't control your mind or have a control over your thoughts if you don't meditate. Um, at least it becomes very difficult. 
you might have a, a, a good way of doing it. You might, you, have, you might have your own thing. But if you want to be able to do it at a consistent basis, you have to be meditating. And there's also the thing of like, do I have to meditate if I'm already doing all these other things? To, for me, what I've learned from Abraham Hicks, which was my teacher when it came to all of this, was that you have to just, you just go with what you feel. With what you really, with, with what you feel is right. So if you're already doing a lot of things, you know, you're, you're, um, you're going out or you're journaling or you're getting into hobbies, you're pursuing your passions, etc. then maybe meditation isn't what you need because you're already following these positive things. But I will always emphasize meditation because it tunes you into yourself. It points the attention towards something inside of you rather than something outside of you. It allows you to understand that really the power comes from within you rather than from external circumstance. So yes, you might be doing these practices, um, but the most important thing is that these practices are supposed to enhance your connection to yourself. That's at the end of the day, the most important thing because this increases your intuition. It allows you to access your intuition. So one thing about intuition in terms of practicing detachment for results. That's really what this video is about. I don't know if I said that, but this video is about how to practice detachment from results. Because if you had clicked this video and and I had titled it "How to How to Get What You Want," then I'm not gonna. I wouldn't be doing what is in alignment with me internally, which is I want to talk to the people who already know that it's about detaching from the thing. Um, I don't want to even insinuate that this is about you getting the thing itself. I don't want to walk that path. This is for the people who already understand that it's about the detachment from the result. It's about achieving inner peace. It's about um, you evolving as a human being, spiritual being, etc. So intuition, it is very much talked about all around in the world. And I will say that a lot of people don't understand it very well. But when it comes to getting the thing or uh, achieving detachment from the result, you want to value your intuition over getting the thing, over the form nature. Because when it comes to manifestation or um, spiritual realization or just general ev evolution of, yeah, just the general evolution of things, if we, ever, if we were to think about it, things are first spiritual before they become physical. So if we can always hone in on this thing right here, always pay attention to the spiritual aspect of things, always uh, revel in the facts of this existing, if we can do that, then we will forever be stable. Because the moment we start to pay attention to the physical and value the physical over the spiritual is the moment that we are valuing something that is fixed. We limit ourselves to what is seen. We limit ourselves to what can be felt. And often what can be felt, what can be seen, is not spiritual. Spirituality lies beyond appearances. So also, in, in, in terms of the spiritual aspect, the spiritual aspect is something that you have much more control over because the spiritual aspect comes from within. You have the ability to perceive without, without seeing something in the physical. If you can see it in your mind, then you can hold it in your hand. And that is the truth that I have seen and lived through learning all of this. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And the thing is that the moment that you can see it in your mind is the moment that the manifestation has begun. So if you can learn to always come back to the manifestation itself within your mind, learn to play with that, learn to experiment with that, learn to um, have joy with that, then you can really, you can really tap into some powerful creative abilities. But more importantly, that also allows you to become detached from physical reality. So you'd rather be you'd rather be in touch with the source itself that is generating the thing rather than the thing itself. This is the thing where they talk about you'd rather want to have the um, you'd rather teach the man how to fish than giving him a fish because if you teach the man how to fish, he can always go out and get more fish. But if you just gave him a fish, he'll eat it and he's done. So. This is what I'm trying to teach you. This is actually the aspect of mindset that I want to talk about. Um, 
it pays off when you just focus on really the mindset. And I want to go deeper into this, but it will come out as I proceed. So the next thing that I want to emphasize is going to be, so we have meditation, we have intuition. It's going to be about intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation. So how do you hone in on this thing? How are you able to pay attention to this most of the time? How can you take your attention away from appearances, from the physical? How can you, because we have a conditioning in our life. We, we probably were born, you were, most likely were born, and you were born into a family, you were a child, you had fun, you enjoyed just the process of creation, and at some point people told you that you have to be realistic. And the moment that you, you were told that was the moment that your conditioning began because then when being realistic to a lot of people means um, being dependent upon physical reality. It means having to hold the thing before you can believe in it, right? And as children, we were very gullible, which is the beauty of, uh, of innocence. But innocence also, it, it could be, people will see that as a negative trait. But the beauty of innocence is that you don't require physical reality to believe in something. When you feel it, you believe it. And that is the state that we're trying to get back to. But now, not from an innocent state, but from a conscious state. And so that's why we have to talk about all these things. So meditation, intuition, uh, intrinsic motivation, these things are gonna help you tune into the spiritual aspect and, and focus on that rather than the physical aspect. And that will take you away from the conditioning that that physical reality is the most the most important thing. It will it will bring you into the the uh, conditioning or the truth that is really about spirituality, the spiritual aspect of things. It's primary. So intrinsic motivation. What is this? If you're not familiar with psychology, intrinsic motivation is basically when you are motivated by intrinsic results or intrinsic things versus extrinsic. So intrinsic is internal, extrinsic is external. When I have a goal, for example, to make more money, that is a more extrinsic result. It's something outside of myself. Okay, so when I have that money, I have achieved my goal. But if you have an intrinsic motivation, then you can make gaining uh, financial intelligence the goal. So now if I make more money, but instead I make my goal to develop financial intelligence, then I could progress along the way much more easily. I can count my wins much more easily because when you make it a goal of $4,000, for example, and you're gonna be very much dependent on whether you have the money in your bank account or not. But if you have the intrinsic motivation of gaining financial intelligence, then even when you lose money, there's a lesson to be learned and you are progressing on your path, on your goal to become much more financially intelligent. And the thing is, that this is actually what the wise do. This is what actually what creators do. They know how to pick the wins from from uh, from physical reality. So this allows you intrinsic motivation to be stable when things are not going your way because you are not being dependent upon what uh, physical reality is showing you. You are seeing that there's something much more important. You, there's still lessons to be learned you are guided by something internal. So when you're guided by something internal, guess what? That is also a spiritual thing. This is why spirituality, again, is, this is another example of why spirituality is very practical. It's very efficient. It's very um, true. Okay, the next thing, that's intrinsic motivation. How else can we learn to focus on the spiritual aspect? How else can we focus on the internal um, aspect of things? I want to talk about a huge life lesson that I've learned, which is really where all of this comes to a head. It all comes together. So the biggest life, life lesson that I've learned to this date is that, and it's going to be a little complicated. Hopefully you can, uh, hopefully I can explain this well enough. It's that as spiritual beings, 
we go through life so that we can as a creator so let's first talk about let me establish this fact we are creators and if i had to point to a specific identity for you to choose i would want for you to choose the identity of the higher self this is what you truly are you are a creator and you have a higher self and if you could gain access to this then you can understand what I'm saying. In reality, we go through life and we have many life lessons to go through. And we are meant to evolve as individuals. And the thing is, our soul chooses to go through, and to, to get into physical reality so that we can understand ourselves at a higher level and also so that we can evolve. So from the soul's perspective, all of life's circumstance, all of life in general is supposed to serve as a container for your evolution. So we have you right here. We have you entering this container of life. I'm just gonna call it a, a cube. And then after that, we have a much bigger you. The increase in size comes from you understanding more of your power, basically. And the container, your evolution will, de will depend much more on how consciously you can take on this container. Do I see this circumstance as a life lesson? How does this difficulty connect to my soul? What am I supposed to learn here? What cycle am I in? What is the struggle here? Like, where could I be after I have learned this lesson? When you start to think like that, then you start to kind of, you start to exit the physical and enter more the spiritual. You start to not see yourself as this small self. You start seeing yourself as this higher self. And you cannot solve a problem with the same approach, the same thinking that caused that problem. You have to approach it from a higher level. So the thing that you will want to do on the usual when you want to solve your problems isn't to think about it from the normal self uh, where it, it is a problem. You want, to, you want to be able to become the person that's detached from the problem and can observe it from a distance and can see exactly where that can take you. And that is basically the perspective of you, that's you embodying the higher self perspective the creative perspective, the conscious perspective. It's a conscious approach. So here, then the container can become anything in your life, whether it be uh, getting the thing, whether it be uh, a career, whether it be you learning how to, you learning a skill, whether it be um, you going through a hardship. If you can take any problem and understand that it will serve as a container for your evolution, First off, that will automatically increase your ability to get through the problem itself, to solve it. So increase solution. Also, that will increase your stability because now you become more detached from it because you are observing it from a distance. You are not getting caught up in the drama. You are allowing it to happen and you are understanding that there will be a way out of this. And you also increase the speed of manifestation. And this is just something that we don't have to go too far to understand it. We don't have to go too far. You understand that when you put more time into something, then you basically get, you basically increase the manifestation of it. The more attention you put into something, the greater it gets. But here it is very important for, to think about what kind of attention. Because if you're putting a, an attention of worry, of stress, of struggle, then of course you will amplify that. And so you will make the problem even bigger. It will appear much bigger and that will affect you in a negative way much faster. But if we can approach it from a way of wisdom, of creatorship, of higher self understanding, then you can enhance the speed of evolution in reference to that, in reference to the growth of your powers to create. So 
so like something simple would be um, the more you work on something, the closer you get to its manifestation. We can see this in labor. The more hours I put into me working on this thing, on this clay figure, the faster it happens. And it's the same thing here. But now the attention isn't physical, the attention is mental and spiritual. And then when it's spiritual, then it really embodies everything. It embodies the physical, it embodies the psychological aspects, the mental aspect, the emotional aspects, etc. cetera. Um, so this is really the point that I want to end off on, which is when you're able to perceive every container, um, any life circumstance and take it on as a creator, then it will lead to these results, which is uh, you'll achieve the solution, you'll have more stability, and then you also manifest much faster. So you understand here that these aren't really the things that I'm trying to emphasize. What I'm emphasizing is the spiritual aspect and the ability for you to think like a creator. And everything that you take on from here on out, from spirituality, is going to be so that you understand your power as a creator, your power as your, your ability to tap into your higher self, and your ability to consciously take on life as a container. Detachment from results. So going back to detachment from results, I think I think already kind of said it, but being able to access this state automatically puts you in a detached state. Um, so if there's any more questions, anything that I left out that maybe you're curious about, if you found this helpful, first off, give the video a like. Second, leave any questions that you have. And thirdly, if you want more content like this, or if you want to just have the opportunity to ask me more questions, get closer to me, join my community, Lucid Education, um, and we will present much more concepts like these, powerful concepts to change your life. All right, thank you for tuning in. It's your boy, stay lucid. Damn. Damn.